All right, how's it going, y'all? Today I'm continuing my TrueNAS tutorials, and this one's going to be on to how to set up DDNS with TrueNAS. So DDNS is a really important part of basically any kind of server you wanna run, because most people do not have a static IP address at their home. So because you do not have a static IP address at your home network, if you wanted to run a service like a VPN server, every single time the IP address of your home network changed, you would have to update your configuration files and the entire VPN would break until you fixed it. So to get around that, there's a protocol called DDNS, which stands for Dynamic DNS. Essentially what it does is it has a computer on your network, in this case is gonna be our TrueNAS build, always telling a server what its current IP address is. That server then goes, okay, that means the IP address of Will's house is blank, and will therefore update the configuration of the DDNS hostname to point to that home network. All right, so I know that's a little bit complicated sounding, but essentially what it's gonna allow us to do is have an address on the internet. In this case, we'll call it truenas.spacerex.co. I own the domain name spacerex.co, so it'll be very easy to do. Then this truenas.spacerex.co, we're going to set it up so that it always points to my home's IP address. That way, if I'd like to run a VPN server and connect back to it, even if the IP address of my home changes, I will still be able to be redirected just to the home. It's a really clean way of always making sure you can connect back. It also allows you to do things like SSL certificates, if that's what you're looking for. So in my next TrueNAS video, I'm gonna be going over how to set up an open VPN server. So that's why this is really important to do. And that's one of the really nice things about TrueNAS 12 is they finally added configuration to set up an open VPN server. All right, so there are a lot of different ways you can set up a DDNS server, and the most popular ones are either through NoIP, DYNU.com, or setting up your own custom one. For me, that's what I'm gonna be doing here, though the steps are essentially similar between NoIP and DYNU. So I actually own the domain spacerex.co through Google Domains, and they've created a really easy capability for setting up a DDNS server. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is just go in and log into domains.google.com. And if you're using no IP or another service, it's all honestly a very similar configuration. All you really need are the username and password. So I'm just going to go in and manage my DNS on spacerex.co. And if you're using Google Domains, just scroll down until you see synthetic records. And then we're gonna set up a dynamic DNS. And we'll call it TrueNAS spacerex.co, and we'll click add. So now, if we expand this, we can see that the IP address is currently set to 0.0.0.0, .0, which makes sense because we've not done any kind of configuration on it yet. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to use these credentials right here to set this up. But first, we need to go in and start configuring this within TrueNAS. So now we're gonna go back into the TrueNAS server and we're going to go down into services right here. And then from services, we see the second line is dynamic DNS. So what we're gonna do is we're first going to configure it. So this is a pretty simple way to configure it. The first thing is you choose your provider and they've got a ton of them listed here. And so even if you don't have yours listed here, you can also set up a custom provider. That's honestly kind of gonna be out of the scope of this video, though it is a pretty simple web command. So we're gonna to go to domains.google.com, which is what you use if you're running this off of Google Domains. Now we've got a section for check IP server. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to specify a very specific server that you would like to use to check the IP address of your home's network. And so say you obfuscate your IP address somehow on your entire network using a VPN or something, you could still specify a very single host name that you use, and that is not blocked through that obfuscation. That way you'd get your real IP address and you'd be able to use that. It's also good for certain protocols that do not automatically just assume the IP address that it got sent is the one that's correct. So most services do not even require this though, because they will just go and update the IP address of the DDNS server to be whatever computer was requesting it. And so it's really straightforward for that. But if you need to specify this, this is where you would do it. Then now we also have the section for the actual domain name. So we called it truenas.spacerex.co. And this is the update period in seconds. So how often you check it. 
I've got it set to 500 seconds and that's not too big of a deal. Really the only time IP addresses change at a home network is whenever there's a router reboot. You're not just gonna get one five or six times in a day. And so with a few times my power's out and my router reboots, I'm willing to say, okay, we'll check that 500 seconds and maybe there's 500 seconds of downtime for anybody trying to connect. You can decrease this, but certain services will start banning you if you do. So make sure you don't request it more often than their minimum cooldown time because they will just ban your home's IP address. Another really important thing to do for Google especially is to click SSL. You have to use SSL with Google domains, otherwise they will not work. Now we get into the section for username and password. And for Google domains, they set this up with credentials that are automatically configured and randomized. So we're just gonna copy the username and copy the password. And just click save. All right, and so now we've got that set up. So we're gonna make sure it starts automatically and we're gonna start it. So now give it a minute or two to check it. But now we're gonna go back into Google Domains or if you're using DYNU or anything like that, go back in that service and it should tell you the IP address. And so we're just gonna refresh the page. And right there, this is my home's IP address right now. Don't worry, I'm gonna reset my router and by the time you see this video, it will have changed most likely. All right, and so really that's all there is to it. TrueNAS is gonna go through and every 500 seconds for me is going to tell Google Domains to update its IP address. That way, even if my IP address changes, this truenas.spacerex.co will always point to my home's IP address, meaning I can run services at home and have them constantly working. It's a really nice way of not paying for a static IP address and still having a really easy setup. All right, so that's honestly all there is to it now. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make about TrueNAS in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.